In this video, you will learn how to calculate how strong the box is that you created or selected to ship your product. If this is your first time with us, welcome to Inside Look at Packaging. I'm your host, Ben Cram. On this channel, we bring you tips, tricks, and industry secrets around packaging, as well as help educate you to feel comfortable and confident with the packaging decisions that you make when you present your products. If you have any questions about packaging or you just want some insight, I highly suggest you hitting the subscribe button as well as turn on notifications so that you won't miss a single video. Now let's jump into the video. This is part two of our series on the shipping box. In part one, we talked about dimensioning and where those dimensions come from on the box, as well as we discussed a myth that many of us believe about the shipping box. And if you missed part one of our series, I encourage you to hit the link up above or down in the description below so that you can watch that video and get caught up. I closed the last video with talking about the McKee formula and how we can use that formula to calculate how strong our box is. Now, if you recall what the myth was, it was that the product gives the box its strength. Now, that's just not true, and we're gonna see that today by calculating out and doing a problem with the McKee formula. And here we are, the McKee formula. Now, I have to add a disclaimer before we get too far into doing this calculation. This formula was published in 1963. Now, of course, technologies and machinery um, and a lot of equipment and other studies and tests have come a long way since then. Um, and so this formula gives us kind of an estimate, a good idea um, about strength, but it for sure doesn't give us the accurate exactly what um, our box's strength is. And so I encourage you um, to use this as a starting point and a, a, good, a good place to kind of have an idea uh, of how strong your box is. But if you really want to know, um, I encourage you to go to a manufacturer or a testing facility where they have these machines um, and testing protocols um, to really get accurate to specifically what your box's strength is. Looking at the formula, it starts with BCT, and this stands for Box Compression Test. Compression is going to be our main source of strength um, and kind of the thing that we need to focus on with our box strength overall. The compression is what our boxes are made for because lots of times they're going to be stacked on one another, and so the weight from the one above is going to be smushing down on the one below, and so looking to know how much weight that our box can handle on top of it is what the compression test is going to be. And so that's why we start, and that's what the McKee formula is really looking for, is how many pounds our box can handle if something's sitting on top of it. We're gonna walk right through. So this next number is 5.875. Now this is just a constant. And so anytime you do this equation, you're always gonna use that number. Moving along in our formula, after our constant, we see ECT. ECT stands for edge crush test. This number that we're gonna be looking for here is on the bottom. It's most often printed on the bottom of the box. And so if you're creating a box, you just need to know um, what ECT you would like to go with. If you're using an existing box, it'll say on the bottom on the box manufacturer's certificate. And as you can see, oftentimes on the bottom, that box maker's certificate will show the supplier or the manufacturer who made it, where it was made. Um, it'll have some other information, but they always have that ECT um, because that's an industry-wide um, test that they do to show what grade the board is. Um, and so if you're, if you're using an existing box, you'll see that on the bottom. Um, and if not, 32 ECT is kind of the um, general used for uh, a lot of the boxes that we see. So now that we have our ECT value, which was 32, we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is a little bit more math, but it's not hard, and I'll walk you through how to do it. We have H times Z, and H is just gonna stand for our perimeter. And so if you recall to part one in the series, the, the uh, dimensions where we talked about length and width and depth, 
the perimeter is just going to be of the opening. So that's just going to be our length and our width dimensions. And then Z stands for the thickness of the board um, that we use. And so um, corrugated or cardboard or the shipping box, that material um, is there's different grades and thicknesses. And so um, and that's all based on the inside, um, kind of the corrugated, um, what's actually called the flute. Um, and that's how we grade uh, how thick the board is going to be. And we'll talk about that later in the series. But we're just going to use what we call C flute. Again, this is kind of um, industry wide, used on uh, you know most things. Um, just for most weights, it's going to be pretty strong. Uh, again, that's probably what you're going to see if you use an existing box. Creating a new box, you're going to be probably pretty good with uh, C flute. And so uh, that value and that thickness is three sixteenths of an inch. Now that 3 sixteenths, if we calculate it out to being a decimal, which is a lot easier to do um, equations like this because we already have decimals in it, um, it's going to be 0.1875. Since we now have some of our values that we're looking for, like our ECT, which is 32, and our Z value, again, which is going to be our 3 sixteenths or 0.1875 inches, Let's write it out that way so that it's easier and all we have to find is H, which is the perimeter of our box. Now that we wrote it out and kind of simplified it, now we're only looking for H on this side of the equation to then find our box compression test and our strength. So we, again, we added 32, which is our ECT value, and then we added 0.1875 which is the thickness of our board, which is C flute. Now, in order to finish the equation and figure out a hypothetical box strength, let's just pick a box that is gonna be 10 inches in length and 10 inches in width. Now, as I mentioned before, the perimeter that we're looking for that we need to use in our equation is just the opening of the box. And so, again, part one, we have our length, which is the longest side from the opening. Then we have our width, which is then the shortest side from the opening. So in this case, if our box is 10 inches in length and 10 inches in width, I understand this is not a square, so I apologize. But if we're looking for perimeter, that's all four sides. And so in the equation, it's easiest to write it out this way. And the easy way to write out our perimeter is gonna be two times the length plus the width. So if we recall the box, we're gonna have two length dimensions and two width dimensions. So if we just add the length and the width and multiply that by two, we get that perimeter. Now to use this perimeter then with our box that we created, our 10 by 10 box, our 10 length, 10 width, we're gonna have 10 in our length spot, 10 in our width spot, and of course, some easy math, 10 plus 10, 20, yes. Okay, now so we have 20 inside the parentheses times two, it's gonna be 40. Okay, so now we know what our perimeter is, which is 40. Okay, so now we know our perimeter is 40. Now let's put that back under the square root and we can calculate out the whole equation. Okay, so now calculating it out, we go first underneath the square root and figure out what that is. So 40 times 0.1875, we get 7.5. Now we take the square root of that. And so if you're doing this on a calculator, uh, obviously it makes it easy. Just hit your square root uh, button and then punch in 7.5. And that is going to give us 2.739. I'm rounding to the third decimal place. And so now we can write out the whole equation with just the numbers. So we start again with our constant, which is 5.875 times 32, which is our ECT, times the 2.739. And we punch all those in and we get the final value of 514.86. Now this number, is how much weight our box, which was 10 by 10, C flute 
32 ECT can handle from on the top of it. So as you can see, that's a pretty big number and when it comes to pounds. So this again, if it's a, on a pallet or on something where maybe it's on the delivery truck and something's gonna be stacked on top of it, our box can withstand 514 pounds. And for me in my applications, that is plenty. Now the weight that our box can handle is quite large, but I also just wanted to let you know that this is gonna be a static pressure, static weight. And so in the case when maybe our, our box is on the truck, on a plane, wherever it is, and it's moving up and down, that value becomes much less. Um, just as if you were gonna drop it on the floor, all of a sudden our strength value does go down because all the strength comes from the rigidity of the flutes and, and all of that with the material. But once that's broken, our strength is much less. But so that value of the 514 pounds, that is if something is just sitting on it, not moving. Now, if you look online for the McKee formula, you may see it organized a little bit differently than what the example I just shared with you. You may see underneath the square root at the end where we have our caliper or thickness as well as our perimeter, you might see those swapped. So maybe in our case, we had H and Z. You may see it more in the flopped way where it would be Z and H. Again, the way that math works, all of that is underneath the square root and it um, calculates out to the same thing. I just wanted to give you a disclaimer um, in case it looks wrong when maybe you're going and trying to do an equation. Um, but so it all works and it comes with the same answer. Thanks for watching part two of our series on the shipping box on the channel Inside Look at Packaging. Stick around for part three where we break down even more the shipping box. If you found any value in that video, I encourage you to hit the like button as well as subscribe as we will be sharing a lot more videos um, that hopefully really help you in your packaging journey.